Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about upgrading your storage on your Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S. I'm going to cover all your options from platter hard drives, SSDs, to the official Microsoft solution that's plug and play. So let's go take a look. Alright, so before I jump off the tripod and show you all the details of how to set all this stuff up and configure it, I just want to give you an overview of what we're going to be looking at today. I'm not just going to show you what you can get, how you can install it, how to set it up. I'm going to do some comparisons for the performance differences you're going to see between them. Um, so the things that we're going to cover, uh, starting from the low end to the high end, the lowest kind of end that we're not really going to cover is you can get like a high speed uh, flash thumb drive to use for external storage. I wouldn't recommend that because if you already have one laying around, you want to use that just as a temporary thing to like throw some stuff on. They're not going to be really big. You're not going to get a really good size, you know, one terabyte flash drive for an affordable price in the way that you can with our lowest end solution, which is going to be an old school platter hard drive. This is a full size desktop hard drive. You can get server grade ones or whatever. They're like 5,400 RPM or a full performance 7,200 RPM. I'm going to put links for the ones that I get for my storage solution. I use this for my uh, storage array um, and drives that kind of fall out of that end up in my uh, in my external storage solution so this is I think this is a three terabyte yeah this is a three terabyte hard drive which you can get these on Amazon for like 40 bucks um, you can get a four terabyte for like 50 bucks so these are super cheap and then you'll pair them with something like this which is a three and a half inch SATA hard drive enclosure this will actually fit three and a half inch full size desktop drives as well as smaller drives if in case you have some laying around and you just want to repurpose them as external storage for your Series X or S. Uh, it's a good way to do that. Um, so I'll have a link for that enclosure as well. I'm going to show you how that works. These are great for external storage for your system. But for the Series X and S games, the current generation games, you can't play games off of this. You'll copy them back and forth. Although the copy process on the Xbox is surprisingly fast. Um, so for previous generation games, like if you're using Game Pass and you're playing Xbox One games or Xbox 360 games, you can play those directly off of here. So if you have Game Pass, this is a great way to just install a bunch of games from Game Pass that are like last generation that you didn't play, that aren't like Series X required, and it's a great option. So these combined, because this is like 20 bucks, is so for three terabytes, you're talking 60 bucks for external storage. And then once you have the enclosure, you can just swap them out. So if you want to buy two external hard drive, I mean, good luck filling up three or four terabytes with old, you know, with older games. But if you want to use it to download a bunch of your new Series X and S games and then just copy them on here so you don't have to re-download them every time. This is a really great option. The next option up from that is the same basic concept, but with an SSD. So this is an external en enclosure um, for SSD drives. And these are just, this is a SATA, let's see if I can pop this off here. This is a SATA SSD. Come on. Come on in. Oh, it's right there. Ah. So this is a SATA SSD. It's not an NVMe. You can find external enclosures that will use NVMe drives if you want. But honestly, you're overkill at that point because this solution will not be compatible with with installing games or playing games for Series X or S straight off of them. You can't stream the next generation games off of this. What this will do is make it so that previous generation games that you stream off of here will load faster. And for the new generation games that you're copying to and from, the copies will go faster. So this is a one terabyte hard drive. Um, I haven't checked the prices recently, but you're probably gonna pay, if you find a really good deal, 60 bucks for a one terabyte SSD. Otherwise, you're gonna probably be paying in the range of 80 or $90 for a terabyte of storage on an SSD. Plus the hard drive enclosure, which is gonna be the same basic price as the other one, even though these are smaller ones. Um, so it's still gonna be about 20 bucks. So you're looking at about $100, $110 for one terabyte versus about uh, 60 to $70 for three or four terabytes. Um, so this is kind of like if you want your external games to load faster or if you want to copy more quickly and you've got a little bit extra money to burn. 
So that's a, it's a good option, but honestly, for me, if you're going with an external storage, the cheap option is good because speed isn't gonna be as important. Um, but I'll show you some comparisons. I did some comparisons of load times uh, for games that I installed across the internal hard drive versus the SSD versus the platter hard drive externally. So I'll put those comparisons up. So the other option that you have is the official expansion card from C, this one's a Seagate from Microsoft. So this is the official, you can plug it straight into the port on your console, and this will work the same as internal storage. So the one terabyte module is $220. So this is pretty pricey, right? For what you're gonna get versus the cost of say the drive itself. So you're paying a little bit of a premium because Microsoft wraps it in its own little plug and play, um, you know, little package there. So you're paying a bit for convenience and for the guaranteed compatibility, but it's an option and it works like your internal storage. So it basically just gives you an extra terabyte of, of console storage that your console can't tell the difference. So if you've got the money, that's the way to go. There's also a larger module. The two terabyte module is $400. So if you want it right now, you know, so if you want two terabytes of same as internal, now the Series X comes with a terabyte of internal storage by default. I think after the OS install and everything like that, it comes out to about 800 and some gigabytes of space you can use for games. This adds on a terabyte. Uh, so basically this one will more than, just slightly more than double your storage that you have for games on your console. And if it's all current gen, then you'll do that. So if you've got the money and you wanna do that, this is, e it's not, I'm gonna show you how all these are installed. So once you get something like this set up, Plugging this in isn't really any easier than plugging this in, um, but you'll get the performance difference and you'll get the usability. So, um, so those are the options we're gonna discuss. I'm gonna show you how each of them work. I'm gonna show you comparisons of how they perform and let you decide what you wanna use for your upgrade solution. And both of these work the same for Series X and Series S. They have the same expansion cards, they have the same USB ports available, <clears throat> works the same way. You just have the built-in GPU performance differences between the two consoles. So let's switch over, jump off the tripod, and we'll go walk through how we get all these installed and working. Okay, so we are off the tripod. And so I'm gonna walk you through the, in the case of the Xbox, extremely easy process of getting external storage set up and configured. Um, so you'll probably get more value out of the performance comparisons than me showing you how to plug things into ports on the Xbox. But here I'm gonna show you anyway, just so you get the full picture of it. All right, so I'm gonna switch around to the other side and I'm gonna walk you through uh, setting up the three different types of external storage on the Xbox. Okay, so here is the external storage we have and here's my Series X. Now this is the same process for the Series S. Obviously the consoles look slightly different, but the only thing is gonna be is where the ports are located, but it's the same basic setup for it where you're gonna have the official expansion slot. Let's see if I can get some actual light in here. Right there, the storage expansion where that'll plug in. The USB ports. Now, it's important to note that the high-speed USB ports are denoted by the SS for super speed port. I don't believe, or at least it's not marked, that this front port on the Series X and Series S is a super speed port. So. But just in general, if you're adding storage, I would probably plug it into the back instead of the front just for aesthetics. Um, this is primarily for, you know, synchronizing your controller if you're not doing it wirelessly or whatever. But So this is my currently installed and attached 3 terabyte hard drive that I use for my Series X external storage. Um, and it just plugs right into the USB port on the back. It's as easy as that. Uh, turn it on and configure it and you'll set it up through the console and I'll show you how that's done, it's super easy. Um, the, a good thing to note about the way that Xbox does this is this drive is formatted for Xbox, meaning that I can take this exact same drive and go plug it into my Series S and it will work exactly the same. So if it's Xbox One games that are on here or games that are compatible with Xbox Series S, um, well, I mean, it'd be Xbox One games that can play directly off of this. So if you have a, you know, like Game Pass and you've got games that can be played straight off this hard drive, you can plug it into your Series S and play them straight off of here as well, um, as well as using this to cap copy games back and forth. So Xbox hard drives work from one console to the other, which is really nice. The other thing, so you, if you have a, the SSD, right, it's the same concept where you've got another port back here. You want to install that. All you got to do is plug it in. Your Xbox will recognize it. 
and it'll just work. It's the Xbox is really great at using these external storage drives. Um, if you use these drives somewhere else, like on a PC, obviously they will need to be reformatted. So you won't be able to share this data between like a PC hard drive. They have to become your Xbox storage drives basically, but it's really super easy to do that. And with the Xbox, you can actually plug in multiple external drives like this at the same time and they will be usable. This guy doesn't allow that, naughty. Um, super easy on the Xbox. So then the last thing that I'll show you is the extremely complicated process of plugging in the official expansion card into the Series X. All right, so here we have this tiny little guy here and he's got a little protectable, protective cover over the card. So super difficult here. You've got some curved edges there so you can make sure you line it up. But let's go ahead and go through the really complicated process of installing a terabyte of additional storage for the Xbox Series X. Uh, oh, I kind of thought that would be it, but it's the wrong way, so it won't let you stick it in the wrong way, which is giggity <clears throat> important. But there you go. That was the extremely in-depth and complicated process of installing an additional one terabyte of storage into the Series X. And again, you can unplug this. Now this, you can install Series X and S games too, and this will also plug into your Series S because it also has the expansion slot. So this is extremely convenient and portable. So yeah, you're paying a premium for sure, but I mean, hey, look, look what you can do versus... So I will have another video for expanding your storage on the PlayStation 5, which is gonna be similar to this as far as the external solutions are. But for the upgraded internal solution, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of surgery to get this guy installed, remove the, the, the case and everything like that. So at least as far as, so this is a little bit more affordable, right? A terabyte here on the PS5 is gonna be, this one ran me about $170 versus about $220 for a terabyte here. Uh, but, you know, you know, the, for the ease of use, yeah, I gotta say, the Xbox ecosystem, the Xbox platform, is nothing if not extremely easy to use. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a couple of loading comparisons. This first, they're both in Modern Warfare, but this first one is the campaign loading. Now, there is a minor difference when I tested the expansion card for this one. Technically, it was about a week later and they had pushed an update to Modern Warfare. So you can see the color is a little different. They changed the letterboxing on the cutscene, which is interesting that this late in the game, They've, they've made a change like this, um, but that has impacted this a little bit, but you'll see that it's a much more uh, predictable response across the board um, when I do a loading screen for a local game where it's just loading the level. But you can see here that for the campaign, the SSDs, the internal and external SSDs operate at about the same performance, whereas the external hard drive is significantly slower in the campaign only by a few seconds but you'll see it's longer when it's loading up a level locally and this is what you would expect from a last gen game right this is a previous generation game which is why it can be streamed and played directly off of the other hard drives and not just the internal drives um, clearly modern games the new generation games are going to be optimized for streaming data off of the internal drives and will have even better performance Now this next loading comparison is pretty much straight down the line what you would expect to see where um, there is actually a minor performance difference from what I've seen between the internal and the expansion card. Um, the expansion card is just a, a slight bit slower um, but clearly still rated good enough to stream textures for the modern games but I was a little surprised by that. Now this is by no means a full exhaustive benchmark of these I you know I'd have to use multiple games run multiple runs and make sure that I get a consistent timing but I just ran them all once set them stacked them up side by side you know cut them all to the same frame where I started the loading event and as you can see here internals fastest the expansion card is slightly behind it the external SSD was a little ways behind that and the external hard drive is lagging hard it is it is bringing up the rear by a very wide margin so this is essentially what you can expect to see if you're playing last generation games directly off of these different storage solutions. And it's kind of as you would expect. expect. The more you pay, the better performance you're gonna get.
Okay, so real briefly, I'm just gonna show you the simple process for formatting a device when you connect it to the Xbox. It does a great job of just recognizing the device, popping up and saying, hey, do you wanna format this for media or for a storage device? Obviously we wanna do a storage device if we're putting games on it. It just tells you to give it a name. So I like to name my things intuitively, especially if I'm gonna be plugging them from one console to the next so that I know when I plug it in that I've plugged in the right thing. And also when I'm copying things to it, I know where it's going. So for instance, I was formatting my external SSD for this. Um, it asks you if you wanna put new things there by default, you can change this in system settings at any time. And then it says, okay, you wanna format it? And when you click format, it's not a lengthy process. It just literally says, okay, it's formatted and you're good to go. So um, another thing the Xbox is really great at with multiple storage devices here, you can see when you plug in the storage expansion card while the system is on, right? It plugs in like any external device and it's immediately there. Then any other external devices you plug in through the USB ports, just as you plug them in, the Xbox is gonna notice them and start, and start rating from them, make them available. It's really streamlined, really simple, and really awesome. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show here is the copy process, as well as I'm gonna show you some data around copy performance. Um, here you're gonna see me kicking off a move of Call of Duty Modern Warfare from the internal storage to the expansion card. In this case, it's a 180.9 gigabyte copy, um, but as you'll see, I'm gonna pop up my little spreadsheet here of the copy times that I measured uh, while doing this. So now this is gonna be interesting to you if your primary reason for putting on expandable storage, especially the more affordable options, is because you're gonna be using it for copying data games to and from the external devices, uh, as opposed to the internal card, obviously, which you can stream any game, the current generation games, straight off of. Um, but this is interesting information to have, and it's good to know kind of the comparison. So if you look here, this is the 179.6 gigabyte copy that I tested all these on, um, with the exception of, like I said, the internal to expansion card copy is actually 180.9, so it's a little bit larger, but you'll see that the performance <laughs> difference there is negligible. So I copied to and from, because that matters, right? Um, and again, this isn't completely exhaustive. It is just, I did it once and measured it. You know, I'm not doing different games, different file sizes, but so copying from the internal hard drive to the external hard drive, or the internal SSD really, to the external hard drive, um, which is the slowest and cheapest uh, solution, for 180 gigabytes, it took it 30 minutes and 26 seconds, and then copying it back from external to internal was a little bit faster, at about 24 minutes and 28 seconds. Using an external SSD, uh, it was 15 minutes. Copying back in was 12. So what you're seeing here as kind of a trend with the external drives is that it's a little faster copying back in than out, but not by a huge, huge margin. Um, but here, when you're talking about the exter internal card versus the expansion card when they're have a super fast connection. You're talking about transferring 180 gigabytes uh, of data in five minutes versus 30 minutes. So again, if it's something where you're using this external storage and you've got, say like I do, a three or four terabyte external hard drive where it's not super time critical, you don't want it to just you know immediately copy things back and forth, you just wanna store games that you don't play very often out there, and then maybe if you wanna play them tomorrow or whatever, you know, kick off a copy, let it take 30 minutes to copy. I mean, Modern Warfare is a large game. Um, let it copy, you know, come back to it in 20, 30 minutes. It's, you know, probably, depending on your internet connection, gonna be faster than re-downloading it. Um, so this can be a really good option if it's, you know, a game disc that you own, uh, this will probably also be significantly faster than copying it from the disc um, itself, an optical disc. So these are good things to have. In the case of the Series S, obviously, you don't get that option. So this is the kind of performance that you can expect to see on the different types of storage. The reason I did these copies directly to internal is for an apples to apples. You know, I wasn't as valuable to say, okay, well, what if I copy from an external hard drive to an external SSD? you're not gonna get as much utility out about the, from that setup. This is, okay, let's say I have my internal storage that I'm playing games off of, and I wanna copy things to and from that and use them as I want. Uh, this, is, this is basically the ballpark what you're gonna see. So keep this in mind, price versus performance. For three terabytes of external storage on a hard drive, 
you're gonna pay about 60 bucks, you know, and you're looking at about 30 minutes to copy a 180 gigabyte game. Uh, an SSD, you know, one terabyte is gonna cost you about 100 bucks. So if you wanna talk about three terabytes of external SSD storage, you're gonna be getting back up into multiple hundreds of dollars to get it about twice as fast versus the expansion card, one terabyte for $200 basically, um, or two terabytes for $400. Um, it's gonna be blazing fast and you're gonna be able to play games directly off of it, uh, but you're also gonna pay the price for that. So for those of you that are interested, here's the data for the comparison of that. And that really kind of covers all of the technical aspects of what you'll be dealing with with external and alternate storage options for your Xbox Series X and S. All right, well, that's it. That's everything that you need to know to upgrade storage on your Xbox Series X or S for whatever your budget is. Uh, hopefully you guys found that helpful and informative. If you did, you can leave me one of these. If you didn't, you can leave me one of those and you know leave a comment if there's something that I missed or, or that you think you would add. Subscribe if you want more stuff like this from me as well as gameplay stuff. There's more gameplay than there's hardware stuff, but I do it all because I'm a nerd and I love to game. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.